let's dive into the process of setting up a Firebase project and creating a database using Firestore in this tutorial. We will also learn how to connect to our Firestore database using a Node.js application. To start, we need to go to firebase.google.com and click on Get Started. From there, we can create a project with any name of our choice. After accepting the terms and conditions, we can proceed to enable analytics, which is free of cost. We can configure the location of our analytics, but for the time being, we can go with the default options. Once the project is created, we can click on Continue and we will have successfully created our Firebase project. Currently, we are on the Spark plan, which allows us to use a variety of applications for free, including hosting and Firestore which offers 1 GB of storage. To enable Firestore, we can click on All Products and then Cloud Firestore. From there, we can create a database and start in test mode. Without any restrictions on who can access the data, we can select the region that is closest to us and our database will be created successfully. To access this database from our code, we need some credentials. We can go to the project overview and select web to create a node.js application to access the database. We can give it any name and select Firebase Hosting, which we can use to host our front end application for free in the future. For now, we can enable it and register the app. Next, we need to use npm to install Firebase and use the provided code to connect to the Firebase. Firebase offers a CLI that gives us a lot of control over accessing Firebase using the CLI. We can install it globally and access it using Firebase. Finally, we need to take these steps to host our application. In future video series, we will deploy our front-end application and explore these options further. For now, we don't need to do anything else here, so let's continue to the console, where we can see the web application we have created. Now let's proceed to open our Node.js application and create a new file called Firebase under the lib folder. But before we start writing anything, it is essential to set up the environment variables required to connect to Firebase. If you need assistance in setting up the environment file, kindly refer to the link provided in the description. To get all the necessary information, go to the web application and click on the settings icon. Scroll down to find all the relevant details. Moving on. In the Firebase file, we need to import the initialize app method from Firebase SDK. To do this, we need to first install Firebase in our project. Additionally, we also need to import the error handler function to log any errors that may occur. For more information on how to create an error handler, kindly refer to the link provided in the description. Next, we need to import all our secret variables from the environment file and create the Firebase config required to connect to the Firebase app. All the necessary details can be found on the website. We will then create a variable called app to hold the Firebase instance that we will create. We will create a function called Initialize Firebase App to initialize the Firebase SDK by calling the Initialize App from Firebase method and passing all the Firebase configs that we created earlier. Additionally, we will create another function called Get Firebase App, which simply returns the Firebase App instance. These two methods will be exported. Now let's see how we can connect to the Firebase Firestore. To do this, we need to import a method from the Firebase SDK called getFirestore. We will then create another variable called FirestoreDB to hold the database connection. Once we initialize the app inside the initialize Firebase app function, we will get the Firestore and assign it to the FirestoreDB variable. Before we proceed with any CRUD operations, it's important to understand how files are stored in the Firestore database. On the root level of Firestore, we have a collection, which can be thought of as a folder. We'll create a new collection in our database and name it anything we like, such as users or transactions. For now, let's call it testing. 
Within a collection, there are multiple documents, which are like files inside that folder. We'll create one document for our collection, and the document ID should be unique for each document. We can auto-populate this ID. Every document is a simple key-value pair. where we can define a key and its data type and value. A collection can have multiple documents, and a document can be a simple key value pair, like the one we just created, or it can be a whole new collection itself. We can have nested documents and collections. Now let's create a new collection called Receipt and see how we can update and retrieve data from this collection using our Node.js server. First, let's take a look at how we add new data. In our Firebase file, we'll import two methods from Firebase Firestore. Doc to create a new document and SetDoc to push the created document into the database. We'll create a method called Upload processed data and create some temporary data to upload to our database. We can have any key value pair with any data type. We'll create the document we want to create using the doc method, which takes three arguments. The first is Firestore DB, our connection to the Firestore database. The second is the collection name. And the third is a unique ID for that document. We'll push this document into our database using the setDoc method, passing the document we want to upload and the data for that document. We'll export this method and test it out. In our index file, we'll import the upload processed data method and test it on a new path called test upload. Even after hitting the API, we won't see any data. So we'll check our logs. The first argument is undefined. The issue is that we forgot to initialize our Firebase app. We'll initialize the Firebase app in the server starting file and test it again. Awesome. We can see that the data was uploaded successfully and Firestore automatically assigned appropriate data types to the values. Now let's see how to retrieve data from Firestore. To do so, we need to import some methods from Firebase Firestore. These methods include collection, which defines the collection we want to retrieve data from, getDoc, which retrieves the collection we defined earlier from the database, and query, which filters the exact data we want to retrieve from that collection. We will create a method called getTheData, which will start by creating a collection reference. This reference is a reference to the collection we want to access data from. It takes two arguments, Firestore DB, which is the Firestore database connection, and the collection name, which is the collection from which we want to retrieve data. We will then push all the data we retrieve inside the final data array. Next, we will create a query. In the query, we can specify exactly what data we are looking for. For now, we will retrieve all the data from our collection reference. We will get the data using the getDocs method, which returns the document snapshot. We can loop through all the snapshots and get the data out of it. Finally, we will return all the data we retrieved. In our index file, we will create a new path to test this function. We will return all the data we receive from the function. When we hit this URL, we can see an array of data. The first empty object is the empty document we created earlier. Let me create some test documents.
I created three more documents with different dates inside Key 3. We will then learn how to query the data with some conditions, such as getting data between a date range. For that, we need to import a new method called WHERE, which is useful to add conditions inside our query. We will add a condition telling Key 3 should be greater than or equal to this date and less than or equal to this date. These conditions should be inside the query, not inside the getDocs method. We can see that we get only three out of four documents. Since one of the documents falls outside our time range, we can query with any key value condition. If you want to learn more about the WHERE method, there is good documentation available, which I will link in the description. We have successfully connected to the database, and in the next tutorial, we will see how we can put all the things we learned so far and build our final receipt tracker bot in Telegram. Thank you for tuning in, and I'm excited to meet you in the next tutorial.